<coughs> okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation to give us this talk uh, in this important international conference. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the Gromov's infer inference on Finsen geometry. You know, we uh, we don't maybe we haven't seen any specific theorem mentioned by Gromov, but uh, if you read his papers. There are lots of great ideas in the paper, and I want to bring them to your attention. Okay, so we know that uh, uh, during the last almost 14 years, SS Chen uh, life and uh, he pushed on the development of physics geometry in China and, and uh, around the world. So there are uh, uh, there are many uh, you know people. Get in, get into this field and uh, and so many great results have been published, okay. And uh, uh, so on uh, the other hand, you know, I want to talk about the influence of the Gromov's idea in the uh, also in the uh, things of geometry, okay. My uh, yeah, I begin with uh, uh, the basic definition of the thing symmetric, okay. So fin symmetric, we will view it as uh, as a positive definite uh, fin uh, fin symmetrics, and uh, we will <coughs> we will view this as a metric space because every fin symmetry induces a, a distance function, and conversely, if you are given distance function on the manifold, and you take the limit, you get a fin symmetry instead of a you know a Riemannian metric. Riemannian metric has much special property. It's quadratic, uh, each tiny space. Okay. <clears throat> right, then uh, because that's a metric space, you know, it uh, induces a volume form, right? Every metric space, you know, there's a there's a host of measure, uh, measure, right? Induced by the metric. And so this unique uh, general metric space. And Boltzmann uh, studied this problem and also trying to find a formula. He find a formula to describe this uh, uh, cost of measure. And that uh, it's given by this formula, you know, local coordinates, okay? And uh, what I want to say that if you're given, this is slightly different, okay, in this situation. If we are given a hypersurface in the manifold, uh, then uh, what is the natural uh, uh, volume form on this hypersurface? Well, you can, Study the um, induced metric first, then consider the Gromov, uh, consider the Hausdorff measure. Okay, Boltzmann Hausdorff, you know, volume form. Uh, but another natural way to look at uh, uh, the volume form on the hypersurface, and actually, hypersurface has a special normal vector field on the surface. So it induces a natural volume form. Okay, this volume form has a property. If you look at the forward uh, epsilon neighborhood of the uh, of of the hypersurface, you you find the volume and then take a, take the limit divided by epsilon. Then the limit is going to be the volume of uh, of the of the hypersurface. Okay, and uh, so and uh, this is volume is uh, you know with respect to the volume form induced volume form in the normal vector field. Okay, that's about to the volume. Okay, now uh, Gromov, okay, uh, has several very long papers. I believe that very few people have read it. It's so difficult to read it. The first paper is about the feeling, it's called feeling uh, the many manifolds into space. Okay, and uh, actually, and all the methods he presented them, and uh, it's not, that's not very specific to, you know, the many metrics there. In general, very general, okay, setting just because the Riemannian jumps is pretty popular. So he keep using the Riemannian matrix, okay, mention that. But uh, sometimes he will say, okay, this, you know, sometimes he say the theorem for Finster matrix. Okay, so because look at the definition, you know, a feeling about feeling radius, for example, uh, uh, given a Finster uh, uh, manifold, right? And uh, a compact Finster manifold, it's a metric space. so. So if this, you know, if this is a, a, a 
embed isometric embed into another metric space, then you can talk about so-called feeling values of the manifold in a metric space, uh, which is uh, the smallest epsilon such that M is bound in the epsilon neighborhood of, uh, of this manifold as a subset. Okay? The bound means it involves uh, you know involves a uh, homology group with respect to uh, the integer coefficient. Okay. So that means that uh, this natural homomorphism vanishes. So you we use a actually here we use a topology concept to define a geometric quantity. Okay. And uh, as pointed by Gromov, every metric space or small metrics are thin symmetric man, man, manifold, right? Every you know thin manifold can be naturally embedding asymmetric embedding to its uh, L infinity uh, uh Banach space. Okay. Right? So so as, as there is a natural um this there is a natural asymmetric embedding. This is a surprise. It's a very simple uh, exercise you can show that this I is a natural uh, embedding. So so the every compact thin manifold or every compact metric space can be viewed as a subset in a, in a, in a Banach space. Okay. So Banach space is trivial, topologically it's trivial, but in geometry it's not trivial. It's, a, 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 it's a infinite dimensional and it's very complicated. It's hard to understand infinite dimension. But anyway, you can define the theorem radius. That means you can consider a, a epsilon neighborhood so that uh, this homomorphism vanishes, you know, uh, the nature of homomorphism from uh, HN to HN of the of the Epsilon neighborhood. Okay. Okay. So uh, think about the sphere. Okay. The sphere, I think, is this time a radius R and the Epsilon, the smallest Epsilon can get is uh, I is Epsilon is going to be the radius. Okay. So the three radius in this case uh, is. Uh, yeah, if, uh, if, if it's a sphere in the European space, the stainless sphere in the European space, and consider the Ipsion neighborhood, then if my Ipsion is going to be the radius of the sphere, then the Ipsion neighborhood of sphere will be a contractible space, uh, right? Contractible uh, domain. So the homomorphism vanishes, okay? So I think the uh, feeling radius, uh, relative feeling radius okay, in the European space, of a sphere is going to be uh, is going to be R, but uh, for abstract manifold, it's different. You know, you you have to put the manifold as a subset in the Banach space, and this is a, a difficult part. Okay, so uh, here's an example. And uh, Katz uh, was uh, one of the student. I think Gromov has manuscript gave to him, and uh, and uh, Gromov did not do the computation of the special. Uh, uh, example, it's trying to find a uh, cat spend time and uh, prove that it's not easy to prove the unit of sphere, the film radius is going to be, it's not going to be the one, okay, because that's an abstract space, okay, it's not a considered like a, a n minus n plus one dimensional Euclidean space, okay, so, so actually it's one half of our arc cosine negative one of n minus one, okay. And of course, Gromov uh, gave a simple observation and says, okay, the feeling radius is only is always less than equal to one third of the diameter of the manifold. Okay, a metric space. It's a thin manifold then. Thin manifold, I just said at the very beginning, it's just a small metric space. Okay. okay. So so you know uh, why you know general thin symmetric uh, general metric space is even compact. It's not easy to study because it's not differentiable, right? If you want to apply calculus to study uh, uh, the geometry of a metric space, you have to assume the metric is smooth and the underlying space is manifold. And that is a Finster manifold. So Finster manifold is very natural to study, right? The first. And, uh, and then, okay, in geometry, in the many geometry, you know, for any manifold, when we talk about geometric quantity, you always think, okay, what is geometric quantity you're talking about, right? So yeah, diameter, that's one dimension, right? And the volume. And then nothing between that, you know, in geometry, right? I'm not sure. In topology, we have lots of things between that. Homology groups, you know, cake, one, two, three, all the to the end. So lots of things in the middle uh, uh, you can talk about, right? Give the structure of the topology stress manual. But the, for in geometry, we find out, and the geometric quantity is very simple, just 
diameter, you know, there's a maximum distance between two points, or just the volume, the whole volume uh, of the manifold. That's it, you know, right? And uh, how do you understand the manifold, right? You know, Gromov introduced uh, 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 several uh, intermediate uh, quantities. The first one is called the intermediate diameter. That gave one. La, la, la. Yeah. La, la, la. What? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so a man between two The voice is that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, continuous. Uh, the continuous uh, a continuous map of between two metric space. We said it's to key generate if uh, if it's a factors like that, you know, uh, if there's a between the two space x and y, there is a called uh, k dimensional polyhedron. Okay, k dimensional polyhedron. Think about just k dimensional manifold if you want. Okay, so so uh, uh, so you have this map, this version, and then 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 the 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 diameter, okay? and uh, uh, I have to yeah. I, Keep some steps here. So the diameter, the case diameter of this metric space, uh, is going to be the infimum of all those uh, uh, diameter of the uh, of the map. But I'm going to yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to give you the second equivalent definition, so much easier to understand. Okay? The second definition uh, is 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 that okay? You give uh, give a metric space, you can see the map from x to the K dimensional polyhedron, okay? And then the pull back every point, the pre image of Y has a size, or right? this size uh, is, has diameter, you find the maximum value. And you think about the fiber bound, okay, in this case, maybe a, a mattress, a manifold has a fiber, you know, a vibration, yeah, fiber bound you know, over another lower dimensional manifold. But here, we cannot assume the manifold, K is a polyhedron, that's enough. Right, then, then you take the infimum of all this uh, f and the k, f from x to the, to the k, k is a k dimensional polyhedron. Okay, that definition is more geometric, it's easy to understand. Right, and uh, then you get a sequence of a diameters between the diameter we're already familiar with that and the zero, okay? So when k increases, it's decreasing, okay? And actually, Diameter when k equals zero is our usual diameter of the manifold. When k equals n, it vanishes to zero. So there's a sequence of numbers between them. So those geometric quantities are quite, quite interesting, but to define using this simple topological uh, uh, topological uh, uh, description. Okay. Now, now uh, there is another. Uh, uh, and that's a geometric intermediate uh, uh, geometric quantities we call the intermediate radian okay radius okay so uh, so first of all you just can see that m as a sub sub uh, you know m as a sub uh, uh, set in another metric space we can see the relative diameter okay radius so case radius is going to be the smallest epsilon so that uh, there was a, a, a called a k-contractible map, okay, and uh, and uh, so this k-contractible map is not far away from the natural uh, uh, asymmetric embedding, okay. So that one, uh, then you put manifold any any metric space, so any metric space, you know, in our case is a finster manifold, okay, into its Banham space, so as a subset. Then, then, uh, uh, then the case radius of the manifold is defined to be the relative case radius of the manifold with its uh, with, uh, with its uh, own Banach space. And uh, by a simple argument, actually, I look at the argument, and he just says there's nothing new here; just half of the diameter we proved. So I think uh, uh, you can stick with a uh, uh, stay with uh, you know the, the case diameter of the manifold. So the case diameter of the manifold is defined for any compact metric space. But then we want to find out uh, uh, 
in order to uh, work with this uh, geometric quantum, he found out he has to release uh, as a, as a, uh, release the uh, uh, the condition. So instead of uh, assuming that it's a it's a key degenerate map, therefore it has to be uh, k contractible. That will be enough. So so if it's homotopy, the k degenerate map, that's enough. Yeah. So that's what he he introduced for any compact subset in a metric space. The so-called uh, 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 the k contractibility radius of m in the x is going to be the uh, lower bound of epsilon, so that this natural uh, the natural in inclusion into its epsilon neighborhood, okay, is k contractible means it's a homotopic to the k degenerate map. Okay, k degenerate map. We have uh, I think I give a definition of the very beginning. It's going to be um, yeah, it is going to be uh, uh, can be written as a decompose a composite of two two functions, okay, uh, two maps, and uh, there was a key key dimension polyhedron in the middle, okay. But anyway, so this is another quantity which is a uh, which is a uh, smaller than uh, uh, the uh, case radius of the manifold, okay, and uh, but find out you know at the very beginning we already introduced the so-called feeling radius the feeling radius is by simple observation is smaller than the n minus one's con contributed radius of the man because those are the quantity i just say we do have a uh, uh, right now we do have a many intermediate uh, uh diameters or, or radius uh, uh for, for a given n dimension manifold the question is how the, how this uh, quantity related to uh, other geometric quantity, you know, we want to understand that, okay? So, Gromov proved that, okay? For a closed affinity manifold, okay, he indeed a study like that, okay? For closed affinity manifold, uh, <laughs> the n minus uh, uh, one's uh, contributed radius of the manifold, okay? Is going to be less than equal to the constant universe constant times n root of the of the of the volume of the manifold, which is uh, about with respect to the Hausdorff uh, uh, volume form, okay, from a uh, Hoss Boseman Hausdorff volume form. Okay. Now uh, he also asked, uh, is this true uh, uh, for the for the even for the n n minus one radius of the manifold, okay, which is half of the uh, n minus one diameter, and this. Maybe not, maybe not. I, I don't think it's true, but it's not in the kind of kind of examples. So that's just a relationship between uh, those quantities, uh, intermediate, uh, you know, diameters and the volume. We are familiar with that. Okay. But right. uh, no coverage is involved at this moment. Okay. Now here's the coverage involved. Okay. We try, yeah. So I'll give a he proved that it's actually true in uh, for the Finster manifold. He gave out a closely many manifold. Okay, we assume that rich curvature is bounded from below by negative n minus one. So if the unit ball, each unit ball has a very small volume, okay, has a very small volume, okay, then and uh, and then uh, uh, one can show that the n minus ones. Uh, uh, radius of the manifold is can be controlled, can be as small as, as possible, depends on the maximum value of the, all this the unit the volume of a unit force. And if you look at his argument, the Gromov's argument most of the time, you know, just find that the only place to use this is a volume comparison theorem. And the volume comparison theorem, and uh, if even without too much modification, and sometimes, you know, but when he wrote the paper, there was a no volume comparison theorem for the Finster manifold. So that's why he always sometimes go back to give examples, give out the many, many okay, examples. But, uh, but actually, one can, uh, we can uh, uh, prove, uh, get similar results okay, to uh, end the curvature bound, which we are familiar with. You know, is a rich curvature, not rich curvature itself is not enough. And we have uh, the weighted rich curvature, for example, that's sometimes enough. You know, yeah. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. So the key idea is very simple: is to 
construct when when the volume of each unit boy is so small, that means loop manifold looks like uh, uh, it looks like a, a fiber bound over uh, n minus one dimension manifold. Okay, the fiber is getting small, it's, it's so tiny. Okay, and sometimes you can uh, show that you know it this is this, the fiber looks like a you know S one fiber bound. You know, very similar, but it's not. A, you cannot prove that. But so. So you can the uh, at the pre-image of each point, uh, the diameter is, is 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 very small. Okay, then using that, and you can uh, show yeah you can show that construct some map so you can show that the n minus one's uh, uh, radius of of the manifold is very small. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is a place where curvature is involved. So now I'm going to talk about volume form, okay? And uh, in those arguments, the key, key, uh, uh, key ideas uh, is using the volume form. Now, why is it called the Gromov uh, Bishop of volume form? Uh, Bishop of Gromov volume form because before Gromov, uh, Bishop already got the volume comparison theorem for the for the Riemann manifolds uh, and the rich curvature lower bound, and uh, and you will find out that this this result can never be published in any journals, only in the book. I think when Bishop Bishop told me that, okay, I met him. So he told me that he, when he was writing textbook on the manual geometry, he find out hmm, there are some things missing. I need a comparison theorem for for the volume. So he put the volume from uh, uh, this theorem in the book. But that time he did not realize the importance of the relative volume comparison theorem, just the absolute volume comparison theorem. So, so Gromov uh, uh, find out he needs the, the so-called relative comparison, volume comparison theorem, and uh, he established using Bishop's idea, just modify a little bit, okay? And uh, he used that theorem uh, and over and over again in many of his papers. That's why uh, uh, it's called the Bishop, uh, Bishop Gromov volume comparison theorem. Because it's uh, it's when we talk about the relative comparison theorem, right? This is the one I'm talking about, you know. But we can even uh, don't mention the curvatures. We just say if there's some function uh, uh, with some property similar to the one, yeah, you know, comparison theorem. And uh, if uh, if uh, if it's decreasing the ratio of the of the of the volume of the of uh, the sphere, okay, uh, over this uh, function. You know, it's a non increasing, that's enough. Okay, then we say the manifold with a volume form has a, I just say, high uh, volume property. Okay, so, but this can be guaranteed using if, if the Laplacian of the distance function uh, uh, satisfies this upper bound and over the, uh, over the cut domain, then it's guaranteed. Okay, this is just simple observation uh, in one of our, our recent papers. So probably it's known to maybe you know the idea is it's it's, just, it's already known a long time ago. Right. And uh, how how did we use uh, how did we use uh, this uh, relative comparison theorem? That's why I call the Gromov, you know, Bishop of you know, Gromov, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bishop of Gromov comparison theorem, because we need the relative comparison. Theme, okay. So so the idea, the key idea used here is if you have a larger manifold, it's hard to control the topology, understand topology, right? So you cover the larger manifold by as many, many small boards. And you take the maximum set of disjointed boards with radius epsilon, okay? Then you find out if it doubles the radius, then you get this covering. And then, first of all, you just use the relative com volume component theorem to estimate those boards we are not infinite many, you know, it'll be under control, okay, by the volume comparison theorem. And the, and the special case is that this, each of the boy in the covering do not, and does not intersect uh, too many other balls around that, okay? So that will, uh, so many, uh, actually many good results have been, you know, pertaining in the application of the volume comparison theorem. I, I look at the literature, there are many good results there. Already made, you know, by by B and uh, and Zoe and uh, and recently also Yen Song Ting also has some results 
apply those kind of volume components of them to 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 establish a, a result for for the for some topological properties uh, or some topological properties of spin cement where under a certain curvature bounds. Okay, so you can find out uh, those papers. Uh, Okay, uh, so what kind of, uh, I just want to mention two of them. That we, yeah, what kind of conditions guarantee uh, M has a X in a high volume properties? Uh, the first one is a long time ago was uh, in was, uh, was in 1996. Yeah. So when the rich curvature is bound from below, you need another quantity in lower bound, which is S curvature, and combine them together. And those bounds then, the volume has, you know, has a, a, a the volume, uh, yeah. We then we establish the volume, the relative volume composite them, okay. For uh, and the function, I like this one in some cases, okay, because in this case you can get absolutely upper bound, because when uh, uh, when uh, chi t, you know, when t is sufficient close to zero, the rate is t to the n minus one. Another one is good. Well, if we just only consider relatively uh, volume composite there, you can combine those two conditions into one condition. We call that weighted rich curvature, and that was uh, uh, this is a result in uh, you know uh, Alta's paper, and uh, you can get a relative co relative volume composite there. But uh, in this case, you, you have to be very careful. Not all the results, uh, uh, you know. Sometimes we do need a uh, absolute. Uh, um, uh, upper bound for on the volume for, for R sufficient small in that case, and then you cannot use that condition. Okay, and you cannot use this uh, uh, volume composite under the weight of each curvature. So you have to be to be careful. Uh, uh, if you don't need that property, you know, uh, absolute, uh, absolute uh, volume composite them, you know, okay, and uh, then that be fine, okay. So you can combine the two uh, curvature can be into one. Okay. So this is about the comparison. And then let's talk about the group of the other ideas. Okay. Now I'll give a call, I'll give a cohomology group, right? So, so you can define a real co-chain if you took an uh, algebra topology before. And a real culture, you know, uh, you viewed as a function on the on the thing. You know, simplex, right? So you take the maximum, so you get the L infinity norm. This could be infinite, okay, sometimes, okay? But, but we only, yeah. Then for any, uh, for any, you know, for any class in this cohomology group or the real coefficient, you can define the L infinity norm. Now, this L infinity norm could be infinite, okay? It's not necessarily finite, okay? But we, if we restrict ourselves, it's no other metric structure here, right? If we restrict ourselves on those bounded uh, classes, then you get a subspace of, of, uh, of the cohomology group, okay? This is a vector space, right? So this sub, you know, when, when X is a, a closed oriented manifold and there's a fine, you know, it's a finite dimensional vector space. And this is what we call a bounded part is a uh, is a subspace, okay? And uh, uh, in topology, very few. I think before Gromov, I don't think anybody pay attention to this subspace. Okay, this subspace is a topological uh, uh, invalid, you know, topological quantities, right? Okay, so we call a bounded part, of, okay? And that part actually related to geometry. Okay, the curvature. Okay, so so uh, then the corresponding, you know, you can look at the homologic uh, uh, homologic space. Yeah, it's not group; it's a space. Homologic, yeah, it's homologic group. It's a space. It's a real coefficient, and you can define the L one norm, and uh, you know, take a real chain, and which is the finite sum of this. Okay, and the L one norm is going to be the sum of the absolute relevant coefficients. And similarly, you can define so-called L1 norm okay, uh, on, on any class. But 
this L1 norm, it's not a real norm, we call the pseudo norm because it's possible for some uh, uh, non-zero class, this L1 norm is zero, right? This L1 norm is zero. And uh, uh, just like, you know, uh, some uh, class in the cohomology group, you know, the L infinity norm could be infinity, right? So here, it's opposite to drag, you know, alpha, uh, for some non-zero alpha, is an L1 norm is zero. So we still, however, we still have the hand uh, uh, Banahar theorem applied to that, and then uh, you can, uh, they, they also due to each other, you know, just the infinity versus zero, okay? So especially when uh, you have a closed manifold with a few fundamental forms, alpha and the beta, right? And then alpha, beta extreme alpha equals one. So then you also have the L infinity norm and time the L1 norm alpha. Now be careful, this identity, okay? They are then if beta is unbounded, then alpha will be uh, L1 norm is zero, okay? So this is a sense in the sense if if alpha L1 norm is a finite, or uh, is not equal to zero, then the corresponding beta, okay, the L infinity norm is a finite, then they have identity. Otherwise, uh, uh, when if alpha, the L1 norm alpha is zero, then the L infinity norm of beta is, is understood to be infinity. Okay, this is identity. Okay, those are the very simple, you know, if you want to prove it, just exercise if you study algebra uh, topology. Okay. Uh, then there was a special quantity when you give a closer oriented manifold and then you consider uh, the fundamental class, right? And the fundamental class is unique, right? Then the L1 normal fundamental class is a topology invariant because there is no geometric structure on that, right? This is a, uh, you know, you can show that uh, it's actually uh, uh, two manifold is uh, homology to each other, and uh, and then uh, you know then uh, this will be the same number. So this is a uh, uh, interesting, like Euler number. We know that gauss boltzmann theory and the famous famous result, right? The integral curvature is going to be the Euler number. Euler number is a very special. Uh, topology invariant, but there are lots of other topology invariants. How do you find the connection between geometry and the topology, right? So gauss bonnet theorem is, gauss bonnet chain theorem is just a, gives the equality. One side is geometry, other side is topology. But, but this is a, we don't, we cannot always have such a nice result. So we want to, uh, we want to try to get some information about topology structure and the certain curvature bound or geometric bound, uh, geometric quantity, restriction of geometric quantity, right? But there's an open problem first. All the number is, a, is the integer. So when you get this number, right? The question you go going to ask is, you know, yes, for some manifold, M, the, the, the so-called same pressure volume, it's not a really volume, okay? It's topic invariant. It could be zero. For example, torus, okay? If there's S1 action there, you can shrink two points, so this is going to be zero. So there are lots of manifold. Uh, I say many, for example, any manifold with rich culture non negative, then yes, compact manifold, the, the same pressure problem is zero. So, but there's, is there any gap? You know, what is the smallest number? Does it depend on dimension? So that, you know, do we have a sequence of manifold? So that same pressure problem approaches zero and Gromov couldn't answer this question. And then later on, he never come back to this problem, okay? And uh, this is really uh, hard to grow. You know, Gromov did a lot of work in geometry. Yeah, uh, 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 but uh, he, his background is topology. He got, a, I think he, he got a PhD in topology, not geometry. Yeah, okay. But after he got, but he, he studied geometry too, later, you know, after he got to Stony Brook and, uh, and he switched his attention to, to geometry. Okay. That's why then he has so many good papers that time published. All right, so here's a uh, here's a bond. Okay, so given a uh, closed fence manifold, suppose that the universal cover still have this uh, x volume condition, a property, yeah, whatever. Then the the Gromov volume compared the Gromov uh, same pressure volume form, which is a topology invariant, can be controlled by the volume. Okay, uh, 
I yeah, H is a number determined by a guy. So if we, if uh, uh, if uh, if the curvature, rich curvature has a low bound, S curvature has a low bound, then you can estimate this A. Okay. And uh, he actually proved that you know the, this idea is very similar. It's the same similar idea. Okay. So all I have to do is uh, yeah. All I have to do is uh, 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 just, uh, all we have to do is just use the same argument, you know, but then be careful when you, when you, when you do the comparison, okay? Uh, you do need a, a, a comparison theorem. Uh, without comparison, you know, otherwise just assume X volume condition, that's enough, okay? Uh, yeah. So without the coverage condition, you just assume you have a volume comp relative volume composite there. Then 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 the simple volume form can be can be uh, uh, estimated. Okay. All right. Now I talked about uh, earlier, you know, there was a, a subspace, it's called a volume uh, uh, subspace. It's a called bounded uh, uh, cohomology classes, right? So that becomes up. So if you you know the dimension is finite, right? So you def you, you let you, you can define so called bounded Bayesian number, which is dimension of uh, of this sub uh, subspace of a bounded cohomology classes. Okay, then it's interesting to see that if fundamental group is almost near bottom then this is this is a called a bounded part of the of uh, of the of the cohomology class must vanish of course then beta number the bounded beta number vanishes but what happens if the manifold is a is a hyperbolic space okay a compact hyperbolic space and then the pi fundamental group is not in the open okay in that case uh uh we can okay estimate and control it using the relative volume comparison theorem. Uh, first of all, let's un introduce so-called the near radius. Okay, when we say near radius, uh, this is the smallest. Uh, uh, this is largest possible. Uh, the upper bound, yeah, the largest uh, value r, largest largest number r, such that the fundamental group of the metric ball with radius r. Uh, uh, in in the fundamental group of the of the whole manifold is almost important. Okay, but so the topology of the metric ball is very complicated. Pi one of a b a point with radius r, this can be very complicated. Okay. Uh, so it's never been near for that. Even the image, okay, in the fundamental in the image of the in the fundamental M, it's going to be uh, sometimes it can be uh, almost near for that. And the, under that condition you can control uh, uh, the, the total bounded beta number, okay? And that means, you know, the special case is I is going to be uh, the injector radius, okay? Because when it's I is the injector radius, and then, uh, uh, yeah, the near, near radius, near radius, can be replaced by injector radius because the injector radius is already in the metric was trivial, okay? So that is, uh, uh, so the idea is uh, simple, just uh, cover the whole manifold and then control the, all the balls, you know, the number of the balls, but each local, each small ball, the topologically, you know, is kind of trivial, okay? In the, in the, in the above sense, then, then you can estimate, construct a key polygon. Uh, uh, it can estimate uh, the bounded Bayesian number, the dimension of the, the bounded part of the home homology class. Okay. All right. So this is a uh, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, for the remaining manifolds, uh, Chi and Coding has a paper in Annals of Mathematics that all they want to try to prove that is um, is a for completely many manifold with rich curvature greater than equal to n minus one. And then there's a positive number, uh, so that the near near radius is greater than equal to Okay, so the question is, uh, uh, that 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 paper is very 
hard to read it, to get lots of estimates. Using lots of uh, uh, techniques only good for, for remaining metrics. So, but I, I think the, the following result should be true if the rich coverage, uh, uh, you know, for the things to manage for the, if it end, end the addition of a lower bound of S coverage, but, but uh, you cannot just use the, the techniques provided by Shigan and Cody, okay? So, uh, so this is a uh, this is application of uh, volume comparison, there, yeah. and the and the Grumman also has a papers on the nonlinear spectral. See in in uh, in nonlinear analysis, right? And uh, we 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 haven't said about you know so called nonlinear spectral, but uh, for a fins manifold, there is a uh, there is a very special energy function, which okay, uh, which is defined in the nature way, you know, the uh, given, uh, you know, this, for this final space, okay, and, uh, and uh, this Hilbert space, or Hilbert space, you know, then you consider this quotient, and then this function, energy function has a critical value, and you think you can call it a, a critical value, you know, uh, and the eigenvalue of the, of the manifold. And this critical value, if you look at the Euler Lagrangian uh, equation, and you automatically get a nonlinear uh, Laplacian operator. So we do not, we, we shouldn't define Laplacian operator of a fixed match using a similar method. We should, we get this naturally from this uh, variation, uh, uh, you know, this, oil, yeah, this uh, Euler equation, okay? And then you look at the, when the match is smooth, uh, when the function is smooth and non-zero somewhere, then actually you can show that this just uh, can be written as a divergence of the number of, uh, of u. So it's a very natural uh, definition. Now the question is how to understand the critical values of it. Now you can call it spectrum of the math, things the manifold, okay? So in order to uh, uh, capture those eigenvalues, one have to consider an and, uh, and the dimension like a function, okay? And uh, then uh, uh, you know consider the unit sphere uh, in this uh, hyperspace, and then uh, then you uh, consider the the the, the, the a certain a collection of uh, of a sets. Okay, we only consider those sets. A is closed and uh, and negative A is, uh, is A itself. Okay, those are the subsets of the of the of the unit sphere. The so-called dimension-like function is kind of you know a dimension. Okay, when A is in this class collection, and you define the dimension as the smallest integer, such that there is a C zero a map from A to R K. You see K. This is the place where K shows up. Okay. And then this is a, uh, it's an odd map, okay? And uh, that's it. And then, um, then it has, it should have a, a following properties. Otherwise we don't call it a uh, dimension function, okay? And so dimension of A should positive and uh, A1 contain A2, then the dimension A1 is less than or equal to the dimension of A2. And then for, uh, for any K dimension of subspace, uh, in this cable space, right? And the intersection of VK and with this unit sphere, and has you know, the dimension greater than equal to K. Another important property is always use the, you know, uh, it's not like a linear algebra. See, we define that using topology. Yeah. And for any homomorphism uh, from S to S, okay? And, uh, and uh, it's, if it's homogeneous, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's other function, then, uh, then the dimension of the of of the set A is less than equal to the dimension of its unit. Okay, so actually it should be equal. Yeah, we uh, just enough. Yeah. Okay, using that, one can define a sequence of numbers. We try to figure out. We try to capture the. You see, again. Uh, Eigen value of the of the of the things benefit you define to be the critical number critical value of the energy function. But 
how can you how can you capture it, right? Understand, you know, critical, you know, how do you how do you find the critical values? So you have to do step by step, right? In trying to find a one by one, a sequence of eigenvalues. So this is the idea. So we use a dimension function. You can see that another subclass for a given K and the dimension of A is greater than K, then for any K, you define a number. And that number, we, we can prove that it's a critical value. But we still don't, so you get a sequence of numbers, okay? And you, of course, you can call it, you know, uh, the spectrum, okay? Eigenvalues of, of the math, things are manifold. But we don't know if this setting captures all the critical values of E. This, uh, but this is a, you know, yeah. Maybe for some uh, canonical uh, uh, dimension-like functions, uh, it's possible, but uh, that's a long way to go, you know, it's uh, so technical. Okay, but at least we get sequence of eigenvalues. Okay, so my lecture is almost done. Yeah, so we have sequence of uh, uh, eigenvalues through that. Okay, and uh, again, uh, we can uh, uh, do some estimate if the if uh, if the Laplace uh, of the distance function satisfies this inequality, then you can estimate the first eigenvalue of the metric ball, and using that, and you can estimate the uh, the case eigenvalue using uh, using the using the covering of the of the of the manifold, or the using the small balls to cover it. And then finally, uh, uh, yeah, finally, uh, one can get the estimate. Okay, the case eigenvalues can be uh, estimated uh, from above. And uh, so this is a result for more uh, uh, for more details. Uh, uh, there's a paper uh, written by four of us. Uh, this is called Nonlinear Spectrums of a Finster Manifold. And uh, it's still, uh, there's a lot of work to do, and uh, it's very hard to find a uh, specific example you can compute it. Even in the manuals geometry, right? Given a compact of the many manifold, how, you know, how to construct a manifold was a was an interesting spectrum. So we only do some um, estimate that's still going on, right? Find the how to uh, yeah, how to understand you know the the spectrum eigenvalues uh, controlled by as a geometric quantities. Okay, I, I remember I attended a, a, meet, uh, a lecture by Ufan Wei a long time ago, several years ago, and she has some results to on this. Okay, so this just uh, stop. I have to stop here. This is about uh, one of the, yeah, we are the only discuss three directions. Gromov has some uh, initial quantities, the initial ideas. Okay. So let me stop here.